Finally, what happens if we're working over the real numbers, but we're not willing to appeal the complex numbers? Stylistically, if I'm working with real vector spaces, I'd rather use techniques that involve only real numbers. Now, we have options. We can work with canonical forms that are special to the real numbers. Here, we'll see what we can do with the Cayley-Hamilton theorem. So, if we have a two by two matrix, we'll always have the characteristic polynomial in lambda. It's gonna be equal to lambda squared minus the trace of A times lambda plus the determinant of A. If we apply Cayley-Hamilton, so we're gonna take lambda, we'll replace it with A, multiply the determinant of A times the identity matrix. Kelly Hamilton says that this polynomial in A is always gonna be equal to zero. Now, if I let the trace of A be equal to zero, then this equation reduces to A squared equals minus determinant of A times the identity matrix. I can raise each side to powers. So we'll get A to an even power, it's equal to minus one to the K, determinant of A to the K times I. And then if I multiply this by A, we'll have the same coefficient, but times A. So we know how to raise A to both even and odd powers. Now, we want to apply that to the exponential of A. So we can collect the even powers of A and the odd powers of A. We'll get two separate power series in A. So, for here, just assume the determinant of A is positive. So I'll rewrite determinant of A as the square root of determinant of A squared. So we get this series here, and this series here, where I'm factoring out a square root of determinant of A through the denominator. Now you'll notice, okay, this is just gonna be cosine of the square root of determinant of A. This is just gonna be sine of the square root of determinant of A, when determinant of A is positive. So this is gonna give us a nice compact formula for our exponential. Now, if the determinant of A is negative, okay, we could sort out what we're doing with our series here. And what'll happen is, instead of cosine and sine, we get hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine. So here we're gonna to wanna to take square root of the absolute value of determinant of A. So that's when determinant of A is less than zero. So we have two nice formulas here. Looking at concrete examples, suppose A equals zero minus C, C zero, where C is non-zero. Then, trace of A is zero, determinant of A is C squared, which is positive. Our formula states, exponential of A equals cosine of C times I, plus sine of C over C times A. Note, this works with C positive or negative, by the evenness of cosine and the oddness of sine. Our final matrix is cosine C minus sine C, sine C, cosine C. If we suppose A equals zero C, C zero, where C is non-zero, then trace of A is zero, determinant of A is minus C squared, which is negative. Our formula states exponential of A Okay, we'll have the same formula as before, except we'll replace cosine and sine with hyperbolic cosine and hyperbolic sine, or cosh and cinch. Our final matrix says cosh C, cinch C, cinch C, cosh C. Now, you may be wondering, what about the formula when the determinant's equal to zero? Well, in that case, characteristic polynomial is gonna be lambda squared minus trace of A times lambda. So the eigenvalues are zero and trace of A. If the trace of A is non-zero, it's real. We have two distinct real eigenvalues, so our matrix is diagonalizable, and we can use the previous technique. If we have trace of A equals zero, then we have lambda squared for the characteristic polynomial. A squared is zero, so the exponential is just gonna be one plus A. So determinant equal to zero is covered in any event.